This morning, I am hiding inside the master closet. The closet was finally completed last week and we are so excited to have this room finally done. This morning, our shower glass arrived. Jeremy and I cannot wait to have our own private shower. It has been three years since we haven't been sharing a shower with the kids. So we're very, very excited. We are going to let the installers get started on that. And Jeremy and I are going to get started on our own work for the week. Our shower installer is busy at work inside and while that's happening because he's a little camera shy, we're gonna leave him alone, let him do his thing. And we have our own tasks and goals that we're hoping to accomplish out here in our edition this week. Right, so our plan this week is to get that heavy glue lamb beam in place and secure. It's a little intimidating and it does require us to build the front wall first. It is very, very intimidating. We're gonna frame out that center section of the front wall for our garage. There's gonna be a pocket within that that we're gonna set the beam in that's going to run to a post that we also get set in place. We're going to try to use the tractor to get all of this yeah. done. Really don't know how it's going to go. We can't muscle this thing into place. So fingers crossed. Let's say our prayers that all of this works out fantastically. I thought you were just going to shock put it into place. It's yeah, not going to happen. I just don't want to knock all the walls over. I'm stressing out about this. So first things first, Jeremy's going to be cutting the rebar so we can actually get our tractor in and out without popping the tires. Uh, this weather is changing very rapidly. Hopefully we can get our work done. So what do you guys do for fun? Um, yeah, no, we don't have any fun ever. Yeah, it's fun. So fun. Not because it's raining, yeah, just because we need to check it out. Because you're looking for an excuse to get out of the rain. That's exactly what it is. Come on. The shower installer just wrapped up and took off, so it was a perfect opportunity to come in here and check out our shower for the very first time. The weather today is being very funny. First it was sunny. Currently it is pouring down rain, so good excuse to come in and check it out. So Melissa may have already mentioned it, but it's been a really, really long time since we've had our own designated shower. It's been three years, almost to the day since we left Washington State. So we're really happy to see this in. I'm glad we went with this frameless glass. Looks really nice. Also, you can see Melissa was well, well prepared. She got shower caddies put up over both shower heads. I think the only downside that I see to this is that I know now every time that I take a shower and Melissa hears the water running, she's going to bust in that door. She's going to catch me showering because that's just the kind of woman that she is. Yeah, it's going to be the goal of my day to catch my little brown bear in the 53 shower. 53 year old <laughs> smoker, daytime drinker, and also a uh, peeping Tom. <laughs> on top of it all, let's add it to the list. Put it on the list. Okay, okay. Very nice, thank you. Okay, I got to take some measurements. Okay. Okay, yep, that's the pencil I'm gonna use. All right, down now. Thank you. Bye bye. With getting this center section of the front wall built, we are really taking our time and taking a very specific uh, series of measurements. There's a lot to account for. So in the very middle here, kind of like I referenced before, we're gonna have a pocket that our beam sits in. I think we have things roughly laid out for that. We also have to account for the height of our garage door and the rough opening, what that's gonna be. 
because we need to account for the header that will be over this uh, rough opening. So we need to actually have a pocket in the center and then drop things off on both ends of just this short little center section of wall. So to get all those measurements dialed in, we will start assembling everything, probably do the layout on the ground before we get everything nailed up just to make sure that we are golden, good to go. Safety first. <laughs> Supposed to be safety first. Whoops. Wow. Oh my gosh. Is he gonna get up? Come on, Manny. Come it on. looks like a bunch of lines. King stud, king stud, jack, 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 king stud, king stud. You can read. We you need want me to lay out the jack studs or just the king studs? No, just the king studs. We'll cut everything and nail back into the king studs. Got Sound it. good? Six okay. of them, please. Thanks, Mama. You ever get tired of doing this? No. Okay, that's good. <laughs> it's the thigh master technique. Like that? Sand center. Three and an eighth is what we need, so I trimmed just a hair off a couple of these, but yeah, it should set us. I thought it would sit way deeper. About right, no. Three and an eighth is the difference. So it's just a top plate and a double top plate that makes up for the difference. All right, we got the bulk of this wall nailed together. Let's get it stood in place. Ready? Up for it? I'm gonna get it up for with it. your legs, with your legs. One, two, down, up. I'm a heavy wall. So after wrestling with this wall section for a couple minutes, we're trying to get everything really nice and plumb. It's really important that that be the case. Will you stop touching my buttocks? It's really important that that be the case because um, of this little pocket that we have here that has to be in perfect alignment with the brackets that we have set in the ground, in the, in the garage floor. Stop, Melissa. I'm supporting you. Yeah, so now that we have that up. I just want you to know I'm behind you. Yeah, I, I feel it. I feel that you're behind me. Now that that wall is up, we are gonna brace it off. We have a series of jack studs that's gonna establish the height of our garage doors that needs to be uh, attached to the outside of this wall section. And then after that, that's pretty much gonna be a day, right? Yeah, the kids and Jeremy have been taking a hunter safety course. So that is cutting all of our days short this week, but we're gonna get it done. Happening. What are you doing? Why are you graffitiing? Graffita? Graffitiing. What are you doing? Are you drawing your face? Wow. Okay, we got our little wall up into place. It looks great. Hopefully all of our measurements are correct. Tomorrow will be the true test of that. We are going to make an attempt by ourselves with the tractor to set that big giant beam that goes all the way across. We'll see if that works. We decided not to actually brace this wall because we figured we might want the flexibility as far as guiding everything into place. So it'll stay like this, it'll stay up. It's not sheeted, won't blow over. Wish us luck tomorrow. I'm really, really stressing this. Me too. With Jeremy and the big kids gone for the evening and the little kids at a play date, I find myself strangely alone this evening and there is no way that I'm going to be cooking an entire dinner just for me. So a year ago, I would have settled for a lonely and very cold dinner of cereal. 
But luckily, today I have delicious, nutritious, and most of all, convenient Factor meals right in my fridge. Factor is our go-to for fresh, never frozen, dietitian approved meals that are delivered right to our door. Especially now that the weather is warming up, I don't wanna spend all my time at the grocery store and I definitely don't wanna spend a bunch of time in a hot kitchen. Tonight I am absolutely starving and frankly, all I wanna do is veg out on the couch and catch up on some shows. So luckily with Factor, I can go from hungry to eating a hot meal in two minutes flat with no prep, no mess, and no cleanup. There's something for every lifestyle or taste preference because Factor offers keto, calorie smart, vegan plus veggie, and protein plus options. And Factor never gets boring because they offer 34 chef prepared and dietitian approved weekly options so there's always something new to try. And you can round out your meal with their assortments of sweets, smoothies, juices, and add-ons. So whether you are looking to eat healthier, save trips to the grocery store, or maybe you just want to enjoy a hot meal that you would never otherwise cook for yourself, give Factor a try. Just head to factor75.com or click the link below and use our code GOODCIVILLIVING50 to get 50% off your first Factor box. That's factor75.com and don't forget to enter our code GOODCIVILLIVING50 to get 50% off your first box. Today we are finally ready to set that big glue lamb beam and we are feeling very, very nervous about it. We have no idea how this is going to go and we are not stalling. We actually have a job that we needed to get done months ago, but we're doing it today. Yeah, we need to cross fence our horse pasture, the paddock that they have access to. We've meant to do this over the past couple of years and we've always put it off because we've been a little busy. But the reason it needs to be done is because they absolutely tear this pasture up to where the grass really never has an opportunity to bounce back. Right, so we're gonna cut it in half. That way they can just graze on one half and then by the time they've completely trashed this half, we will move them over to the other half, let the ground rest, and then just move them back and forth. Jeremy is roughly laying everything out and then we will take more exact measurements so it does look nice. So all we're gonna be doing is two strands of hot wire and these little portable sticks. I would never rely on this kind of insulating post to keep a horse in a pasture for safety reasons, but to keep them away from grass, I think it's gonna suffice. How many posts do we have? We have 16 posts plus a beginning and end post. So, okay. yeah. Let's try laying them out. I got to take measures, try laying them out every 25 feet, like the outside posts, and then we'll make adjustments if we have to. Okay. Sound good? Okay, I'll just park them on the ground. There is a world waiting outside our door that stands uncharted. The open air invites each one of us to find a broken ground. Here and now, it calls out, Come along. Now, nothing's in a way of now. Feel it in a place. We are the wonders, the wonders we are. We are the wonders. We came out of so nice. And now, windy with crazy rain coming. Never fails. Out in the wild, past the places that we've known the day. And then leave. For where we go, ever farther, ever bold, no edge, no borders. Roaming on the wind, sings Jenny with. Hail stopping. Yeah. That's good. That's great. <laughs> That's good. 
So we have coiled our fence onto some insulators that are attached to our existing posts on the end. And now we are going to be using some connectors to energize the new fence strands to the existing already energized fence strands, if that makes any sense. Basically, we're gonna make this part of the fence extra spicy. Your nose is running like a faucet. I got like <laughs> hail running down my face and this so is just glamorous. a mess. We're gonna, we're gonna hurry up and get this done. Let's do it. Okay, there we go, all the connections are made. We have this center fencing breaking up the pasture. It looks good, I think it'll be very effective for uh, what it is we're looking to accomplish. But for now, time to tackle that beam, mama. Okay. Let's do it. You wanna just grab one side and I'll grab one side and then we'll just... Piece of cake. <laughs> you got it. It's so heavy. So needless to say, this is a very, very big and heavy beam. It's 36 feet in length. We're gonna need about 32 feet of it. In order to figure out exactly just how much we're gonna need though, we're gonna to have to head back over to the garage. We're gonna run a line where this beam's gonna be set. We need a very specific, precise measurement to work off of. So we're gonna go do that. We'll come back here. We'll cut off what it is we don't need. Now that we got our six by six posts over here, which are actually five and a half by five and a half, we realized that our brackets are a quarter inch too narrow. So Jeremy's going to have to chisel the bottom down just a bit. And while he's doing that, I'm going to go ahead and spray paint these rusty, ugly brackets a nice black since they are going to be visible. In so I'll just see you in a week. Yeah. Check back with me, would you? <laughs> So I didn't realize until after the fact that I had made no previous mention of the two posts that we had to get set within the garage space. So we went ahead and got them situated on our brackets. We ran that twine from this front wall all the way to the back wall and that twine once leveled off with our uh, line level will dictate where it is that the bottom of the beam is, top of post is. So we're actually gonna make some marks on those posts, take them down, then get them cut and then reinstall them. Yes, and then at that point, we will officially be ready to set that big glue lamb beam. It is going to go so smoothly and so quickly, and we're just gonna be so amazed at how great it went. Swimmingly. Ready? Yes. 
Okay. Holes look good. Let's cut that beam. Ah! <laughs> All right, it is uh, go time. I've measured once, I've measured twice, I've measured like three times. Three times a lady. Yeah, I've measured a couple dozen times at this point. So we'll see how this goes. Again, I really don't know how it'll turn out. Crossing our fingers, praying, hoping for the best. But you got this, this, Daddy. I hope so. Scurry. <laughs> yeah, that's a nice cut though. It is a nice cut. All right, here goes nothing. How's your heart rate? I checked my heart rate in the middle of it. It's coming down now. It's at 95 beats per minute. I was at 121 per minute because I was terrified and my stress level was at like a thousand. So. <laughs> that was the scariest thing we've ever done, I think. I, seriously, I think it is. It was very, very nerve wracking. You did it though. It's up there. Jeremy went to go get the mallet so that we can get this exactly where we need it to be. But I think that was definitely at the top of the list of one of the more scary things that we have done since uh, this whole build project began. And um, I mean, thank God for Big Pape, our tractor, for making that possible and for a husband that just never gives up. That was just really scary, but it's done now. Everyone's safe. The build is safe. <laughs> it's just a huge relief. There was a time not long ago where we never would have attempted something like this. We didn't even know we were capable. And that belief can hold you back from just giving it a try, whatever it may be. But over the past three years, we've learned that living a life led by our passion really doesn't have much to do with guarantees. It's finding drive and inspiration in the mere act of creating something that we love, despite the uncertainty. Or at least being able to look ourselves in the mirror and say that we tried. It's not always going to work out, but when it does, that is a good day. How'd we do? Perfection, literally, unbelievable. I can't believe how that worked out. Everything is like, exact. Woo, you need a hand? Oh, come on, it's tradition. It's tradition. Oh my gosh. Oh, our old people backs can't handle it. Oh my goodness.